welcome to another interesting literature in English class. My name is Precious Balogun. Our theme for today is Introduction to Drama, and our topic is Language and Style, Part 3. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the different linguistic devices in a play and describe the different linguistic devices. In order to add excitement and get the attention or sustain the attention of readers or audience, the playwright makes use of some devices, and these devices are known as linguistic devices. Some of the devices are flashback, foreshadowing, mime, mood, point of view, satire, soliloquy, suspense, tone, and figurative language. In our previous lesson, we spoke about some of these linguistic devices, but today we'll focus on figurative language. Now the question is, what is figurative language? Figurative language is a type of linguistic device that is made up of figures of speech. The playwright makes use of figures of speech to express his ideas and thoughts to the audience or readers. Therefore, figures of speech are used by playwrights to express meaning beyond the literal meaning of words, phrases, and sentences. When we talk about literal meaning, we refer to the general meaning or dictionary meaning of words, phrases, and sentences. Some figures of speech are simile, metaphor, alliteration, allusion, hyperbole, imagery, and so on. Now let's take a look at some of these figures of speech one after the other. We'll start with simile. Now what is simile? Simile is the direct comparison of two things or objects by using as or like. Let's take a look at some examples. She is as vicious as a lion. This sentence was said by Romeo, referring to Juliet, saying that she is as vicious as a lion, comparing Juliet to a lion. The next is, my heart is like a singing bird. The playwright compares his heart to a singing bird. And the last, Daniel talks like a parrot. Here, Daniel is being compared to a parrot. That means Daniel talks too much. The next figure of speech we'll be looking at is metaphor. Metaphor is a comparison between two different things that have something in common without the use of as or like. Now, let's take a look at an example. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and Juliet is the sun. In this excerpt, Romeo compares Juliet to the sun without the use of as or like. Now let's go to the next figure of speech. Alliteration is a repetition of the initial consonant sounds in series of words in a sentence. Let's take a look at some examples. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. We can see that the consonant P is being repeated in every word in a sentence. The next we have Father Francis fried French fries using forest fire. Playwrights usually use alliteration to make emphasis and beautify their work. Now let's go to the next, which is assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds or diphthongs which are more than one vowel sound in series of words. Now let's take a look at some examples. Shewa steals, sees sheep sleeping. Shewa steals here is a name of a person. So we see the repetition of diphthongs 
in these words. And the next is, on a proud round cloud in white high night. There's also a repetition of diphthongs and vowel sounds. Another figure of speech we'll be taking a look at is allusion. What is allusion? Allusion is a point in the play where a playwright makes indirect reference to a well-known object, person or thing in a play. This creates an idea in the mind of the audience or readers. Let's take a look at some examples. Okon's father's farmland is a garden of Eden. Amaka is the Judas Iscariot of our class. The young man is a good Samaritan. Garden of Eden, Judas Iscariot, and the good Samaritan are all references from the Bible. Now let's go on as we take a look at hyperbole. Hyperbole is the use of exaggeration or overstatement. Exaggeration is doing or representing something in an excessive manner. So we can say hyperbole is doing or saying something in an excessive manner. Some examples include Muna just finished a mountain of eba. It's not possible for someone to eat a mountain of eba. Another example is, will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No. Macbeth uses hyperbole to say that not even the entire ocean can wash his hands clean. Hyperbole is used by playwrights to heighten effects or make emphasis. Now let's go to the next figure of speech. Imagery. Imagery is a use of figurative language or descriptive language by the playwright to appeal to the five senses of the audience or readers. Let's take a look at an example. An example can be seen in William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Her beauty hangs upon the cheeks of night, like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. William Shakespeare makes use of descriptive language that immediately gets our attention and our five senses are alert. Now, let's look at the next figure of speech. The next figure of speech is irony. Irony is a statement used by playwrights to express meaning opposite from the original meaning or literal meaning of a word. We have three types of irony, namely verbal irony, situational irony, and dramatic irony. Now let's take a look at what verbal irony is. Verbal irony is when a person says something that is opposite of what he or she means. Let's take a look at an example. In a play, character A plans to kill character B, and this plan is well known by the audience or readers. Unknown to character B, then character A raises a toast and says to character B, Cheers to long life. He says cheers to long life, but he means cheers to your death. Now let's take a look at situational irony. Situational irony is when something happens that is opposite of what is expected. For example, a fire station burns down. We all know that fire stations help fight fire. So it's not expected for a fire station to burn down. Next, we have a police station gets robbed. A police station has police officers that help fight crime or stop robbery. So a police station is not expected to be robbed. Finally, we have a marriage counselor files for a divorce. A marriage counselor is meant to help marriages, but it is not expected of a marriage counselor to file for a divorce. And lastly, we have the dramatic irony. 
A dramatic irony is when the audience or the readers are aware of the happenings or the main outcome in a play, but the character is not fully aware of what is going on. Let's take a look at an example from Romeo and Juliet. Romeo commits suicide to be close to Juliet. Unknown to Romeo and to the full knowledge of the audience, Juliet is not dead but asleep. Going back to the figures of speech, let's take a look at the next, which is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is the use of words to imitate sounds that are associated with objects or actions they refer to. Let's take a look at some examples. The clap of thunder and the rustling leaves kept a maker awake all through the night. And lastly, we have Hack Hack, Bow Wow, The Watchdog's Back, Bow Wow, Hack Hack, I Hear the Strain of Struggling Chanticleer Cry, Cook, A Diddly Doll. From these examples, we see that the playwright makes use of words to imitate sound. Next, we have Oxymoron. Oxymoron is when a playwright uses two contrasting words side by side. Some examples are true lies, wise fool, open secret, sweet pain, cruel kindness, bitter sweet, living dead, and poor health. We can also find oxymoron in sentences. Now let's take a look at these sentences. I like a smuggler. He is the only honest thief. And lastly, we have no one goes to that restaurant anymore. It's always too crowded. From these examples, we see that the playwright makes use of words that are seemingly contradicting each other side by side. Now let's take a look at the next, which is personification. Personification is when human attributes are given to inanimate objects. For example, the son's a thief and with his great attraction robs the vast sea. The moon's an arrant thief and her pale fire snatches from the sun. The sea's a thief whose liquid surge resolves. This excerpt is gotten from Timon of Athens by William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare in this excerpt gives inanimate objects human attributes. Now let's take a look at the last figure of speech we have for this lesson. What is symbolism? Symbolism is when a playwright makes use of images, objects, events or words to represent an idea in a play. Now let's take a look at some examples. In the play, The Lion and the Jewel by Wole Shoenka, the character CD represents or symbolizes Jewel and the character Baruka symbolizes the lion. Having discussed symbolism, we have come to the end of this lesson. But before we go, let's take a quick summary of all we have learned so far. We have learned that there are different linguistic devices used by playwrights in a play. One of these linguistic devices is the figurative language. We've also learned that figurative language is a linguistic device that consists of figures of speech. And finally, we've learned that some of the figures of speech are alliteration, allusion, hyperbole, imagery, irony, metaphor, onomatopoeia, personification, simile, symbolism, and so on. How much can you remember from today's lesson? Let's see. Question 1. Our soldiers are as brave as lions. What figurative language is used in the above excerpt? A. Simile. B. Irony. C. Metaphor. D. Suspense. 
The correct answer is A, simile. Question 2. Mekuto and Benvolio think Romeo is still pining over Rosaline, but the audience know he has moved on to Juliet. Which of the following devices best describes the above sentence? A. Hidden play. B. Dramatic irony. C. Monologue. D. Allusion. The correct answer is B. Dramatic irony. With all this, I believe you now know what figurative language is and the figures of speech we have. See you in our next class. Bye.